Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another Powerful Point to Ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you so much for joining me today as we continue the theme that we began on Monday, The Other Little Ships. We're looking at that story about Jesus calming the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is in the boat and um, a storm erupts um, from out of nowhere without any forewarning. And Jesus calms that storm as Jesus calms storms in our lives. But Mark gives us the detail that Matthew and Luke, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke omits. And that is that as Jesus was crossing, according to verse 36, it says, and when they had sent away the multitudes and took him even as he was in the ship, and they were also with him, with him, with Jesus, other little ships. It's almost like Mark is saying that when you have Jesus, you also have these other little ships because these other little ships were with Jesus. And we've looked at two of those other little ships. We're looking at words that begin or that have the word ship in it. And we've looked at membership, which means that it's important to be a member of a church, to be connected to a church. Worship, exalting God's greatness, worshiping God in public and in private. And now here's the third little ship, fellowship, fellowship. That's critically important. Fellowship is the Greek word, it's the Greek word koinonia, koinonia. And the word koinonia means sharing or participation our involvement. That's what it means. It means participation, sharing involvement. And Christian fellowship is important. As I said earlier this week, the church is not a, um, a building, or, or it's not a building, it's, it's not an event that you attend. When we think of church, we think of a building. It's not a building. When we think of a church, we think of an event that we attend. It's not an event. Church is involvement, it's, it's, it's participation in, in, within the lives of other believers. It's intersecting, interconnecting with other believers. And, and Christian fellowship is essential to Christian health. You cannot be a healthy Christian um, as a Lone Ranger Christian. That is why um, that during this uh, pandemic when church buildings were shut, that it was critically important for us to stay connected somehow and thank God for this medium that we have uh, with, uh, with, uh, so with social media, with Zooming, um, with uh, able to come on and stream worship services and stream um, meetings and Sunday school classes and all the other ways that we've been staying connected during this pandemic because we're not supposed to do Christianity by ourselves. We're supposed to be engaged in a fellowship. Now, uh, the one metaphor or analogy that the Bible uses to talk about the church um, is the metaphor of the body, that the church of Jesus Christ is just like a body with different parts. Remember I said that being a Christian is not a building, a church is not a building, it's not an event you attend, but it is belonging. And our body, Paul says, has different parts. And uh, we are supposed to be a part of that body, adding to the health of the body. I want you to see something in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First, I want you to see this point. I'm going to give you this point. Write it down. I want you to see the diversity of the body the diversity of the body. And then we're gonna look at the harmony of the body, the harmony of the body, the diversity of the body, the harmony of the body. And then finally, the sympathy of the body, the sympathy of the body. First of all, look at the diversity that is in your body, which should also be in the body of Christ of the church. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 20 says, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that, that does not make it any less a part of the body. Stop right here. I want you to look at that. Go back to verse 15. 
Uh, verse 15 says, the foot says, if I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that that does not make it less a part of the body. What do you notice about the human body? What you notice about the human body is diversity, that, that a foot is a part of the body and a hand is a part of the body, and that each parts of the body, while they're different, contribute something to the body. And each of us, we are all different, but we like the different parts of our bodies contribute something unique to the body. Now, we should not be envious of another part of the body of Christ just because we don't contribute the same way they contribute. Because even if I don't contribute like someone else, my the role that I play is still indispensable. For example, the eye doesn't do uh, what the hand does right? The eye doesn't do what the hand does. The ear doesn't do what the eye does. Notice what Paul says in verse 16. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? For example, take, take for example, the eye. He says in verse 17, this is good. Look at this. If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? Our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. Amen. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. So what do you notice? You notice diversity in the body. That's the first point I made, diversity of the body. Uh, try picking up something with your eye. Just use your eye and go pick up your fork and start eating using your eye to pick up the fork. It's not going to work because it's not the function of the of the eye. Try seeing with your hand. Close your eyes and use your hands for seeing. Well, you're going to run into something. Why? Because that's not the function of the hand. But each of them function together. They function together uh, in a diverse way. For example, if you, let's say if you uh, want, uh, let's say you see an apple you want, you want to eat an apple. Well, all the parts of your bodies have to work together for that app, for, to get that apple for that to take place. For example, your eyes have to see the apple. And then your legs, which is part of the body, has to walk to the table where the apple is. Then your hand has to reach the apple. Your teeth has to chew the apple and your stomach has to digest the apple. Each one of those body parts were essential, unified in order to function and get that apple. And listen, that's the way we're supposed to function in the church. All of us have different parts. And when you're not functioning, you're not there in the fellowship. If you don't have the hand, then the, the legs can get over there and get the apple. But if the hand is not functioning, then guess what? Then you can't get that apple. That's why it's so important for you to get involved in your church, diversity. And then there's harmony, harmony. Look at verse 21. Verse 21 says that I can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can, can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. I am a pastor, and if someone were to ask me, uh, what is the most important part of the body for a pastor? No doubt most people would think that it's my voice, and my voice is very important. But listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Um, my big toe is important, too, because if you lose your big toe, you got to learn how to walk and stand again because your big toe gives you balance. Now, the big toe doesn't seem like it's important, but if you're going to stand before some people, you want your big toe there because it gives you the balance and the ability to stand. And so it is with the body of Christ. We should treat everybody in church and everywhere with dignity, even though they're not a quote unquote eye or an ear. They might be just a little toe. Think about it. Sometimes the people that are out, uh, out of sight and not up front, sometimes we, we, we don't value them as important. But think about your body. Uh, most of the most important parts of your body you don't see. You have never seen your lungs. You have never seen your heart. You have never seen your kidneys. They are not up front. I see my hand. I see my hair. I see my my, my ears. I, I, I see my, my, my knees, but I don't see my kidneys. Well, lose them and see what happens. Lose your heart. See what happens. Lose your lungs. See what happens. The things that are not seen 
on your physical body are essential. And the people who are not seen, who are not always up front, are just as essential as the people who are up front. We all have a role to play. The diversity of the body, we're different. The harmony of the body, the sympathy of the body. And this is what the sympathy of the body means. If I'm hammering, if I'm hammering something and I accidentally, while I'm hammering, hit my hand, with the hammer. Although I hit my thumb with the hammer, let me tell you what, the rest of my body is going to ache. In fact, let me tell you what's going to happen. Although it hit, I hit my thumb, my eyes are going to water and I'm, I'm going to water. My face is going to pucker up. Say, Ugh! My teeth are going to grit Ugh! and I'm going to scream and holler. Ouch! And it was my thumb but when I hit my thumb, it affects the rest of my body. The rest of my body reacts. And that's the way we're supposed to be in church. That when one person is hurt, we are all hurt. When one person is down, we're all down. When one person is blessed, we are all blessed. That's the sympathy of the body. That's what fellowship is all about. And that's why you need to be a part of a, the church, membership, worship, fellowship, because the diversity of the body, the harmony of the body, and the sympathy of the body. God never intended for you to do Christianity alone. Let me close with a wonderful poem by the great Maya Angelou. And Maya Angelou wrote this poem, lying, Thinking, the poem, by the way, is called Alone. Lying, thinking last night, how to find my soul at home. Where water is not thirsty and, and bread of loaf, and bread loaf is not stone. I came up with one thing, and I don't believe I'm wrong, that nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone, nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. There are some millionaires with money they can't use. Their wives, their wives run around like uh, banshees. Their children sing the blues. They've got expensive doctors to cure their hearts of stone. But nobody, no, nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Now, if you listen closely, i tell you what I know. Storm clouds are gathering. The wind is going to blow. The race of man is suffering, and I can hear the moan because nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. You can't make it alone. Many of the things that you're praying for and saying, God bless me. Somebody in church has that blessing. And brothers and sisters, it's critical that you reconnect with the, the other little ships, membership, worship, and fellowship. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and for the wonderful analogy of the body of Christ, that we are the body, all essential, all have a role to play. Help us to remember the wisdom of Mara, Maya Angelou, that none, none of us can make it here alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me with the, for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a digital disciple here at St. Stephen Church. So contact us, uh, email us. We'll get right back with you. New start at SSC Live. Dot org. That's new start at sscli.org. Well, peace and blessings to you. Thank you for being with me. And I pray, pray that you have a blessed day the rest of the day until we meet again. Don't forget that in the midst of COVID-19, to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is still in control. Take care.